It, you mentioned the company who introduced you to this is this German outfit that became a competitor that you've pretty much blown out of the water. What is it that you have done uh, for your business that's had this happen? Well, the most important thing, which is the reason I entered into this business, is that nobody was here in the United States doing it. And we mm -hmm. are still, after three years, the only company that has a presence in the United States that provides training, support, parts for our customers. Right. And okay. since then, we've actually become a manufacturer of inks for our printers. And any mm -hmm. printing machine must have the proper inks in it formulated for its technology and its print heads where the mm -hmm. ink flows through to actually create the images, whether it be on paper on your desktop printer that's cost you $100 or a $150,000 flatbed printer that signage company uses or mm -hmm, our mm -hmm. $30,000 printer or the German printer. Mm -hmm. You have to have inks that work in that printer and we manufacture them to our specifications so they're always available for our customers, as is the support mm -hmm. and the training, which is probably the most important thing, as well as spare parts should they need that. And so we're located in the United States, servicing Canada, the United States, South America, as I mentioned, and we are the only ones here doing that. And so that's our biggest mm -hmm. advantage. Um, the second biggest mm -hmm. advantage, or arguably the biggest advantage, is that our machines are better. Um, their yeah. printer prints at 600 DPI. Anybody in the audience that knows resolution, our print, mm -hmm. which is good resolution, you can get good quality, near photo quality art from that. Uh, but our printers print at 1440 resolution by default mm -hmm. and can even print at 2880, an outstanding mm -hmm. re resolution for printing on a wall. Um, but then it prints much slower. But optimally, right. our printer prints at 1440 DPA. The other biggest technical advantage we offer is our printers, and this is one of our patents, is we print with white ink. And what that means is, as opposed to your mm -hmm. standard colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, mm -hmm. that most printers all have, the ability to print with white ink means that you can take an image and print it on a dark wall, black, yellow, blue, green, or on mm -hmm. glass. And if by applying white ink behind the colors of the image, which our technology delivers, those colors really pop out on a dark wall mm. or on glass. So when you're mm -hmm. printing on a picture or the menu of a restaurant, it's not being washed out by transparency on glass or by the bleeding of colors of a dark surface mm -hmm. behind it. That's a big distinction of all printers over any other printer in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, you you have, you talked a little bit earlier on about the types of people who might be you know become uh, become clients of yours, um, and what I want to know is there is there an ideal client for you? So as I mentioned, they fall into those two buckets, right? Startup entrepreneurs who want to see, they see something innovative, they're willing to take the risk, and they have the capital. Um, mm -hmm. I call it time, talent, and treasure. They have the time mm -hmm. to do something. They've got the talent or they will, are willing to hire the talent, um, to work mm -hmm. these machines and they have the money to be able to start a business. And that's, mm -hmm. that's half, half, that's an ingredient for all businesses, but half of the ones that see this as a innovative startup and are willing to take the risk to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that really is, you know, somebody who's, who understands the concept of of growing a business is an ideal customer to us. Somebody who, mm -hmm. who, who sees the opportunity, who understands the numbers um, and, and what they have to do. You know, if they're, gonna, if they're going to, if they have an existing business in, like a painter, for example, that should be an ideal customer for us to answer mm -hmm. your question because they, they go into a home they, or a, an office or a restaurant or a school right. and they paint the walls eggshell white or gray or whatever. And yeah. they get to know the customer. They get to know who they are. And let's just take the family example. They go in and they paint somebody's home. And now they know they've got two children. And one of them is into sports. And one of them is into um, um, video games and action figures. Um, and so their bedroom might have a big mural on it of a sports figure or a sports mm -hmm. team logo, the New York Yankees. Um, I'll be self-serving in that. Um, so so they, they want a Yankees logo on a wall or they want, uh, they want a picture of um, Power Rangers. Um, I don't have children. Uh, my children are four-legged, so I'm not sure if Power Rangers is still a thing, but let's say that's what they liked. And, uh, and so they, are, they then have something else to sell these people. But if you're going to do that four or five days a week, you're going to make a lot of money. Our, our printers will easily generate a six-figure income for somebody who does this regularly. But if you've got a painting business and you just pull this out of the closet and do it once a month, 
it's a nice add on service that may attract customers to you, but you're mm -hmm. not going to make a lot of money doing it. So right. our ideal customer to answer your question, Carol, is somebody who sees this as a business and wants to apply full time efforts yep. to the marketing and to the delivery of the services. Now, mm -hmm. the other side of the coin, companies like signage companies, they use these big, expensive flatbed printers, cost one hundred and twenty five, one hundred and fifty thousand right. dollars to print photo quality, laser quality artwork. And so they see this as kind of um, a conflict of interest. Uh, they see this as a, something that um, cannibalizes from their existing customers. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it's not really a true statement, but for the most part, they have not been our ideal customer. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. People who are in the signage and printing business. Um, more often than not, we want the somebody. We want the people who are really risk takers, entrepreneurs who see the opportunities beyond and are willing to market this mm -hmm. to all of those types of customers I've described. Got it. So, you know, as a leader, you, you, you thrive in rapid growth, high energy environments. It's clear that you've got a great deal of energy. Um, you value diverse culture, um, you know, work hard, have fun. Um, and you lead with a good positive attitude, humor, and some humility along with that. Um, Along the way, what would you say are some of the mistakes you've made and why? Well, I've always valued good partnerships. I never really liked doing it alone. This business, I actually, well, I have a 10% partner in this business that I took on early on because he was in the printing and signage business. Mm -hmm. And while he has that business and there's no intersection between them and he's inactive, he had a lot of printing and ink expertise yeah. that I thought would be really valuable. And he was a friend and he was willing to invest something in my business. And so, so that he became a partner and that's been a very, a very positive relationship for me. Mm -hmm. And in the restaurant business, my tennis sporting goods stores and other businesses I've had, I've always really enjoyed partnerships. I've also had in the restaurant experience that I described earlier where I lost, um, in one year, everything that I made in 12 years in New York, um, I had partnerships that weren't, um, ideal. Um, they had different motivations than I did. Um, I wanted to make a very successful, very high scale uh, upscale restaurant. And they really just looked at this as some place to bury some money that they had. And they actually didn't care if it made money or lost money. Um, mm -hmm. I've never personally been in that financial situation that I didn't care about losing money, but apparently there are people like that. Um, and so one of our, my mistakes was not only in not really doing the right marketing uh, or the right market discovery for the audience I was looking for in Florida, mm -hmm. as opposed to what I had enjoyed in New York, that was one mistake. And then the people that I got in bed with, so to speak, that was also a mistake. Um, yeah. So while I believe in partnerships, um, it's very important to really understand the motivations of, of all parties. Mm -hmm. Expect and that's the same as expectations of your customers. If I have a customer who wants to see a photo quality um, reproduction of a, of, a, of a beach scene where they could see the eyes on the seagull when they come up within two inches of our our print that comes out of our machines, which are inkjet printers, that's not going to mm -hmm. happen. These are ne what I call near photo quality. You can get real fine detail like you see above me here um, of people and, and text and things like that, but still it's designed to be viewed from a distance. It's wall art. Um, and right. so, if, so if people have those expectations, um, you know, that's a mistake. And I, uh, early on, I sold to a printing and signage company and I took the machine mm -hmm. back because they weren't happy with the speed of the machine because it didn't work like their $150,000 flatbed printer. It didn't give the same mm -hmm. quality. And so I learned early on, you know, to set expectations appropriately. Right. Better qualify. And, that, and yeah. that goes right across to any business, mm -hmm. any service that you provide. Make That's sure right. your expectations align with those of mm -hmm. your customers or your partners. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're mm -hmm. in for trouble. Carol Schultz here. Thanks for watching this excerpt from Authentically Successful. The conversation doesn't end there. So if you want to hear this episode in full and all my conversations with many other successful founders and CEOs, please visit verticalelevation.com slash podcast.